Welcome back to Class 509 Science History, the corner of the internet where I'm finally talking about a woman! Yes! Oh! <laughs> oh, that's gonna take forever to clean up. So we're skipping ahead a little bit in this uh, last episode for now in our History of Plastic series. It's been good, but I feel like I want to go and cover some other things. So we'll come back. Today, we're skipping ahead and talking about a scientist named Stephanie Kwolek. Kwolek was born in 1923 in Pennsylvania, and after toying with the idea of maybe being a fashion designer, she decided that she wanted to get into teaching, and she thought the best way to do that was to go into science. She had spent an awful lot of her early life before her father died when she was 10 years old, traipsing through the woods and cataloguing birds and insects and plants and animals with her father. He was an amateur naturalist, and it was this remembrance of a love of science in the natural world that made her kind of choose to go into science. Specifically, she was really interested in chemistry. She graduated in 1946 from the Carnegie Mellon University, and just quietly, that is the best name for a university on the face of the planet. It just makes me think of a watermelon. I don't know what it is. Was it the dude's last name or middle name? Was it a weird title? Was he the Melon Lord? <gasps> the Melon Lord! I am Melon Lord! <laughs> During college, her plans had actually changed quite a bit, and she had decided that she wanted to pursue a career in medicine rather than teaching. But medical school was as expensive back then as it is now, so it was hella expensive. <laughs> the Qualic had to work for a few years before she could even begin to afford to actually go and pursue her dream being a doctor. Now, fortunately for Qualek, and unfortunately for every man in the Western world her age, huh, World War II had just happened. So women were needed to work in jobs that were traditionally male-dominated. And so it was in this kind of climate that Qualek decided to apply for a job at DuPont. DuPont itself could kind of qualify for an entire episode of the History of Plastics, but, well, I skipped ahead a little bit. So here's the too long didn't read version. So anyway, Qualic was hired pretty much on the spot at the interview and was given a job working in the synthetic chemistry department. And something weird started happening. She started to notice that she loved it. After working there for about 10 years, Qualic was actually put in charge of her own group. And that group was in charge itself of trying to find a whole bunch of new polymers to put into car tires. I think there was English in that sentence. I'm not going to lie, that was probably the 10,000th time I've tried that sentence. Car tires were being put under increasing pressure as cars got better, and so the tires needed to be stronger. Qualic and her team started working on developing these new types of polymers called polyamides. Because DuPont was all about synthetic fibres, they'd become really good at doing this thing with polymers called spinning. Basically what you did was you pushed a bunch of polymer through these tiny, tiny little holes and then spun it kind of into fibres, sort of like a spinning wheel with wool. So scientists would make up a solution of the polymer and then send it up to the technicians in charge of the spinner. The spinner would then spin them into these fine threads and then they'd send them back to to the scientists who would then perform a whole bunch of strength tests on them. So one day Qualic was working on making a new type of polyamide solution when something weird started happening. Now most of the solutions that you sent up to the spinners were relatively translucent and definitely had no particles suspended in them because any particles in the solution would completely clog up the spinners and send the technicians into a murderous frenzy. Seriously, you don't upset lab technicians. They're the kings and queens of the laboratory. Seriously, don't make them mad. That is a bad notion. So Qualic looked at the solution in her beaker and it was really runny, like unusually runny. And it was also cloudy, but she put it through the filter a couple of times so she was fairly certain there were no particles suspended in it. So she took it upstairs to the technician, showed it to him and went, could you run this through the spinner? And then the technician looked at her and went, oh hell no, that thing is gonna break all of the things forever. Yeah, acting. <laughs> Qualic though was pretty adamant that she'd filtered everything to perfection and was kind of curious to see what would happen. And the technician reluctantly spun it into fibers. Fibers that turned out to be unlike anything anyone in the world had ever seen. The polymer spun surprisingly well into these kind of straw-like fibers that when strength tested, turned out to be stronger than steel. 
Stephanie Kwalek had invented Kevlar. So what makes Kevlar so strong? Well, here are a couple of chains of the Kevlar polymer. I know it's a necklace. Use your imagination, guys. You need to think of each of these little beads as kind of like the opposite ends of a magnet. In reality, they're sort of negatively charged and positively charged bits of the polymer. Now, when it's in liquid form, all of these molecules are kind of sitting in a muddle and in a mess like this. But when they're spun into fibers, they lock into place and all of these little beads are suddenly close together. And the closer they get together, the more attracted they are to each other. And it's really, really, really hard to break them apart. Chemists call these particular types of attraction hydrogen bonds. And Kevlar is just chock full of them. And so it takes an awful lot of energy to break these chains apart. Nowadays, it's used in everything from military helmets to bulletproof vests, to motorbike armor, to fry pans. It's used in fry pans, guys. It's one of the most important polymers to ever have been invented. Stephanie Kwalek was later awarded the Perkin Medal for Industrial Chemistry. It's probably one of the highest honors in that particular field. She was also admitted to the National Inventors Hall of Fame and was only the fourth woman ever to have done that. She was amazing and her invention saved lives. She passed away sadly a few years ago in 2014, but there are a couple of videos where she's done a few interviews and kind of tells her story her way. So I am going to link those down below. She was pretty great. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Class 509 Science History. If you enjoyed that, there are plenty more where that came from. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and make sure you hit the notification bell next to it to be notified of when new videos go up. Yes, that is what it's for. You can also follow me on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter, and also Pinterest. I have a Pinterest board. It's taken me long enough, but there's a whole bunch of links to extras on my Pinterest board, and you can go and follow me there. There are links down below in the description box for all of those things. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye.